So before we go into the next step where we add some additional features to this random text generator form, I wanted to introduce you to the idea of file comparison tools. So if we jump back to the resource pack directory, we have our fourth step in the forms and sessions folder, which we used in the previous video. And then in this video, we're using this fifth step here. Now there's differences between these two, but there's a lot of similarities and it may be useful to be able to see exactly what the differences are between these two files. So in situations like that, it can be a whole lot easier to use a file comparison tool instead of eyeballing it just by looking at the code. So I'm going to jump to a program called file merge, which comes with the Xcode package for free with a Mac. For Windows users, you can use a program called WinMerge. Let me go ahead and show you the website real quick. It's at winmerge.org. And this one has similar functionality, though the interface is a bit different. So the way file comparison works is that it takes two files and then it will show you the difference between each one. So what I'm going to do is go to my resource pack directory and I'm going to drag over this fourth step over to this left square right here. And then I'm going to jump back to the resource pack directory and I'm going to drag the fifth step over to the right square right here. Now the way you do this in whatever file comparison tool you end up using might be a little bit different. But once we've set the two files, we can go ahead and click compare. So if we scroll up and down, we'll see that there's a relationship between what's over here on the left and the right. As we drag up, we see that it will actually drag up both of the files at the same time. Just to orient yourself, at the top of each of these sides is the name of the file that the text corresponds to. Now, as you can imagine, it's kind of difficult to visualize the differences between two files. In one file, there may be some code added or changed or removed altogether. So showing all these things in a way that makes sense takes a little bit of finesse. So here's how to read the results with file merge. Everywhere where there's not any highlighting at all, so up here and over here, is text that is the same between the two versions. But when we have some highlighting, then this is an indicator of a difference of some kind. Specifically, the gray background indicates a change between this version and this version. But within the gray background is some blue text. And that blue text indicates specific changes within this chunk of code. So for example, it's seeing this is set post action here, and it's also seeing it here. So they both have a gray background but this and and symbol is new. And then if we switch back over here, this whole switch statement is new as well. So the blue parts highlight added content on one of the sides. So in a sense, blue is code that's been added to one file or the other. The switch statement has been added here and the and statement has been added here. For practical purposes, we're actually removing this and from the file and we're adding a new switch statement on this side. Down here in the lower left-hand corner, it says how many differences there are. And if we scroll down, we'll see the differences numbered. We have one, two, three, and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down some more, and you see four. And there's a warping of the connection between the parts that have changed in order to always see the relationship between the two. So we see this guiding up here. These two sections are connected. This second section, if we scroll up here, is connected to this line. This thin gray bar here is connected with all of this new code. So this is a good example of seeing where a whole bunch of new code has been added, but not necessarily changed. And then we see a connection between this section and then this section right here. So if you're new to development, it may be a little difficult to wrap your mind around the exact changes that are happening, but after you have some exposure to code, you can get a sense of the broad changes that are occurring in the file. So if we scroll up to the top here, we see here that this is the part where we process the form. In our new example, we actually have a couple of forms, and so we're switching based on the value of the action input. So you can assume that we're gonna have a whole new form in the HTML code as well. And then this line here, where we actually print out the resulting string from our random token generator, disappears. You can see it aligns with an empty line here. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. And then we have all of this new code, and it says we're looping through the number of inputs, and this is where we've added some code in order to allow the user to generate a variable number of token inputs. And then as we scroll down, and actually this form here lines up with this form, and this form is a completely new form. But the file comparison tool made its best guess, and that's what it has. So file comparison can be really useful when you're working with multiple versions of code. 
as you start to work with version control. This will help you identify the changes between one version and another in order to troubleshoot potential problems that exist in the new code. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to our resource pack directory. 